So it looks like TikTok is getting banned in the US, and although that is not what I'm here to talk about in this video, it is the reason I am making this video. Because in the absence of TikTok, it is bound to happen that a lot of content creators from that platform are going to migrate over here. And given that the greatest majority of the last four years my content has mostly been on TikTok, particularly catering to the witchy, occult, and pagan communities on TikTok, that's why I'm here. Because witch talk is going to migrate here. Now, over the course of the tenure of Witch Talk's existence, I feel like that comes with negative connotations, and that has a lot to do with the way that people conduct themselves on that platform and in that niche community, as well as the way that people provide commentary on what other people are doing in their craft and in their practice. And oh boy, that's kind of everything I want to talk about. Because in a talking about this a little bit over on my platform on TikTok, somebody gave me a lead to look up the hashtag occult tea. I'm gonna throw it up right there. So I'm going to utilize that hashtag in this video. That being said, hi, if you're not familiar with my face, my name is Ethan. On social media, I perform the character of Jekyll. A little bit about me, I am a trans feminine non-binary person. Feminine and, pro feminine and neutral pronouns, please and thank you. I am also the host of my DID system, which stands for Dissociative Identity Disorder. In short, what that means is I dealt with a lot of repeated childhood trauma, and as a result of that, one child became many people. I am also ADHD diagnosed, comorbid with Autism Spectrum Disorder diagnosed, because for some reason that matters to people. And these are my special interests. And this Ouija board has got to go. I need more camera space and let's just move an angle and I'm still Wilson from Home Improvement. God damn it! Now I've been uploading here since the very end of 2017 and what I've been doing here for the most part is kind of a wild card, a grab bag. It can be also explained that I do whatever the fuck I feel like doing and it's only been in the last couple of years that I've ever dreamed of talking about the more witchy, pagan, and occult themed topics here and I have taken that on a few times. So let us get this clear right now. This isn't the only type of content that I am going to make but in the potential probable absence of TikTok, I am I'm going to talk about witchy and occult themed things here more frequently. Now ultimately the reason that I want to make this video is one, I have an excuse to talk about some of my favorite shit, social media as well as witchy and occult themed things. Also, here's the main most important thing, witch talk and witch tube if you will, is that what you guys call yourself? I'm still learning. Witch talk and witch tube are two completely separate entities. The way that people conduct themselves, the way that people come to their camera, the way that people make and produce their content, everything is different and the groundwork that has been laid down for witch talk is entirely different than the groundwork that has already happened over the course of the last several years on, I'm just gonna keep saying witch tube. I don't know if that's accurate or appropriate, but maybe it'll catch wind, who knows. I mean, come on, if the Tumblr kids can call their little click witch blur and get away with it, I think I can get away with witch tube. I digress. And with all of that being said, I conclude that the two separate communities couldn't be more different than, say, TikTok and YouTube as completely different video sharing platforms. Although there are definitely similarities, there are different ways that things happen the way, different ways that people go about things, the different ways that communities grow, and if I have it my way, this will help bring some understanding to both sides of what I can only foresee to be a future of friction and frustration. Now I'm going to talk about witch talk, rehashing some of my favorite criticisms as well as some of my favorite praises because I've been talking ad nauseum about the frustrating elements of witch talk, even though I, at least by association, could be considered to be a witch talker. Back to the point. I was introduced to witch talk all the way back in 2020 when everybody rushed to TikTok as a result of the lockdowns courtesy of the COVID-19 pandemic. Over time, I would come to realize that there was a whole history of witch talk, starting off as witches of TikTok, 
Borrowing a similar phrase from Witches of Instagram, where it was a very small niche community where there wasn't a lot of people. And then people were wishing for more people to come to the community and share about their practice. Then in 2020, some of those people who wish for that would instantly regret it. The ensuing discourse was legendary. We had people talking left and right about baby witches hexing the moon, baby witches hexing the fae, all kinds of things going on that ultimately were hoaxes. Yes, nobody hexed the moon and nobody hexed the fae. It was something that happened because people were interested to see how silly some witchcraft practitioners were. And for better or worse, this wound up becoming headlines on slow news days. And it became a hubbub of things even on this platform here where a lot of elder witches were very upset by the fact that a bunch of baby witches would want to hex the moon. And even after the fact, people were acting as if it had actually happened and whether it was here, on Twitter, on TikTok, it didn't matter. Talking about hexing the moon and the insipid, vapid minds that had the brilliant idea to hex the fae when it didn't happen. Regardless of the implications there and alluding to the idea that the person that set out to prove that a lot of witches were actually silly, turns out they were correct, almost overnight, baby witch became a bad word. It became a nasty little thing because a lot of these elder witches were now talking down to new practitioners. People that were new to the craft didn't know what they were doing because clearly these babies need to be protected and guided correctly. Why are there children running around with magic wands? This should be handled much better. And there was a lot of elitism that came from conversations such as witch talk hates broke people. Because somebody had pointed out that the only really tractioning videos were aesthetic posts where people were showing off their altars and showing off their expensive at-home apothecaries and this really quite opposite of minimalist approach to aesthetic witchcraft. Somebody felt like pointing out that, yeah, these are the only types of videos that actually perform well when you show that you look like a witch. And because somebody used the hashtag, witch talk hates broke people, somebody thought that meant all of the witches on witch talk and the witches are responsible for witch talk hating broke people when it was really a critique on social narratives as well as the algorithm at large. At some point, these popular lines of discourse became popular narratives, and these popular narratives that wound up becoming the talk of the town at some point or another became the precedent in which people were expected to conduct themselves. Some people pushed against it, some people tried commenting on it, I myself got caught in the middle of several different commentary points because at one point I thought that all I was good for in that particular word sphere was talking about my practice, talking about my point of view on things, and maybe playing devil's advocate just a little bit. Because sometimes there needs to be a common sense middle point for people to see outside of the heated points of view in these discussions. So I tried to offer different perspectives in the first year of my uploading history from, let's say, May of 2021 to... Well, I quit in January, tried quitting again after the Vanta War in March, left for a month, came back, and continued uploading. So, let's just say around about the first year, this is most of what I was doing. Because I myself had experience from a day and age before social media was what it is today. When I started my craft and my practice, I had forum websites, I had Ask Jeeves, and eventually that evolved into going to my local library, and what got me interested to begin with wasn't even witchcraft or occultism, it was paranormal investigation. 
But I realized that if I was going to be a paranormal investigator, maybe I should learn how to protect myself. One thing led to another. I wound up hanging out with a bunch of people in high school that were psychic vampires. They introduced me to a whole bunch of forum websites. And then I find my long-lost brother because he we've got the same dad, different moms. Turns out his mom's a witch, so from the age of 16, I'm being mentored under her for two years. And the rest is history. Where was I going with this? <laughs> Ultimately, I felt like my perspective could offer different perspectives to other people because I was old enough to sympathize and feel like I was there also when it came to the sentiments of elder witches. But at the same time, being a DID system, I've always felt a little bit like a Frankenstein's millennial, which means that there are some things that other millennials relate to that I just don't get, either because there's bad, icky feelings associated with some childhood memories, whether I never understood because I was a poor, sheltered child growing up, or simply the things that I have my nostalgia for when I was a preteen were the things that Gen Z was getting into when they were wee baby little tots. I found myself already in this midpoint where I could appreciate both sides of the fence and in some weird way understand both sides of the fence of this contrived generational gap. Long story short, I feel like Witch Talk has presented a lot of incredible things as well as a lot of terrible things. But there are a lot of things that got left out, a lot of things that people either aren't aware of or didn't have the perspective that I came across later on, such as with many of these things, including but not limited to the Priest of Zenithrus, being an entire hoax. Because if you don't remember the Priest of Zenithrus, they were a hoax page that people didn't realize was a hoax, where they were posting bombastic videos, never of their face, but of their altar, where they were claiming to throw Hecate into Tartarus and to dethrone Zeus and all of this other shit. And again, it was a hoax to see what Witch Talk would do. And what Witch Talk did was take it at face value and throw a fit and then continue to judge one another in the community regardless of age, regardless of experience, regardless of social settings in that particular community. Everybody was once again suddenly suspicious and nobody knew what the fuck they were talking about because it does not matter because this hoax page over here proved that there are people like this and if you look anything like that, you're just as bad as this hoax page because I think they're totally fucking serious. I lost my breath there for a minute. What was I saying? At this point in history, I must say, it appears to me that witch talk is dead. That doesn't mean that witches aren't making content. That doesn't mean that people aren't holding conversations. What I am seeing, though, is only the dregs remain. People that are really engaging with the social event of witch talk really have succumbed to a little more than arguing with another and getting into witch wars over petty disagreements and now what the fuck did i just disagreements the disagreements disagreements you know what it works i'm leaving it in <laughs> i myself continue to upload witchy occult and pagan content over on my page Jaquel Scam Account 13 because people were stealing my name and my profile picture in order to scam people out of their money because they were pretending to be me because apparently they think that I am special enough to have some sort of social notoriety that I would convince people to hand over their money. Yeah, I just decided to steal nothing and take my power back by saying I'm a scam account. It's worked so far, gotta say. But to explain the phrase, only the dregs remain, this is something that I learned was being written on the sides of buildings in the later portions of the Black Plague, aka the Bubonic Plague, where everybody who was a good person stayed behind to help others. Everybody who was a well-to-do person, whether they were good or bad, fled to safer regions. And the people that were left survived and thrived by adapting to incredibly unfortunate circumstances and there was just a bunch of pillaging and scamming and hurting one another because unfortunate circumstances had ripped entire communities apart because of something that people didn't understand afflicting so much of Europe and the Mediterranean 
and to be in those major metropolitan areas, only the dregs remained. Only the worst of the worst were still there. And to put this into the context of witch talk, it's not that witches aren't making content. It's not that people aren't making their practice a talking point. But the people who are actively engaging in what we could call witch talk and what it was once upon a time are the dregs, because they are what remains. And I'm going to get into it right now. How witch talk cannibalized itself. I'm going to start off this portion of the video by suggesting that witch talk is, or was, a fandom community, or on the very least, it has, for the most part, behaved like one. Because when we think of a fandom community, this is a group of fans that surrounds a type of source material, whether that be comic books, or anime, or manga, Star Wars, Star Trek, the Supernatural TV show, Doctor Who, things like this are the source material, the main form of media in which the fans gather around to talk about their favorite things of the history, talk about their favorite headcanons, talk about fan fictions that were written. They get up and they do some kind of cosplay sometimes. This is where people who like the same thing come together and talk about why they are a fan of this thing. And people get into disagreements. People get into fights because they don't see eye to eye on the thing. Now, the main way that we can say that there is a difference between witch talk and another fandom is that when it comes to witchcraft, paganism, and occultism, this is based in real history. A lot of the things that people wind up talking about is the actual culture of people. We're talking about the history of those cultures. We're talking about the religions and the history of those religions. And I will say that's why it's not a perfect one for one. But the way that people treat the religions, treat the deities, the way that people talk about their favorite forms of witchcraft, the people that go on and on refusing to take the time to look at the actual source material of the Hades and Persephone story and preferring their own narratives about it instead of just reading the fucking Homeric hymn to Demeter. It's a fandom community. And another way that Witch Talk has proven itself to be a fandom community, or in the very least, mimic and mirror other fandom communities, is that the moment a fandom community dies is when the fans become entitled to the IP, the intellectual property, the source material. And what I mean by that is, just look at the way people threw a fit about The Last Jedi. People were upset. People threw a fit. I have not seen any other kind of uproar about a form of media in any other community than the way that people threw a fit about The Last Jedi. And granted, that is an incredibly extreme example. But I feel like the entire Star Wars fandom gives us plenty of examples to lead with. And even though it is different with witch talk because we are talking about real world history, we're talking about the actual mythology of actual gods that are a part of actual living, breathing cultures and traditions, that's kind of disconnected when it comes to a community that exists solely and purely on social media. What we have consistently lacked in witch talk is the presence of a living, breathing, thriving tradition. Many have tried to create their own traditions. Many have tried to say that they were a part of a tradition that they didn't belong to. But what we wind up doing in witch talk and other online occult spaces is we're talking about our experiences. We are providing commentary. And in some instances, we are giving educational content such as how-tos and spells and Advice about how to do this thing, tips, tricks, pointers, things like that. It's disconnected from anything that is a thriving, living, breathing tradition. It isn't that. We're talking about that. We're talking about these different things that would then represent some kind of living, breathing, thriving tradition. And even people going to the extent of talking about it to remind people that... This is social media, not religion. 
not praxis. This is social media. And that thriving life force of any tradition is non-existent when it exists on social media. And this is where the game winds up being changed. Because I think that there is a disconnect as to where people are talking about a spiritual practice or a myriad of spiritual practices, providing commentary, sharing their experience, sharing a little bit of their knowledge. What isn't really presented is that this is a social media phenomenon that we're talking about. And people present it as a social media phenomenon. And people receive it as a social media phenomenon. Now let's take YouTube for example. You have characters, you've got personalities, you've got an understood suspension of disbelief because this is the way that it's been understood the entire time that YouTube personalities have been able to make long-standing careers off of their YouTube career. We've got PewDiePie, love him or hate him. PewDiePie is a character. Felix Schelberg is the person behind the character. We've got Mark Fishbach, who performs the character of Markiplier. We've got Sean McLaughlin, who performs the character of Jack Jacksepticeye. You've got Ethan Taylor, who performs the character of Jaquel. That doesn't really get accounted for in witchy online occult spaces. So then there are people like me, and I know I'm not the only one, I'm just using this excuse that understand that on social media, there is social media kayfabe, a suspension of disbelief between the audience and the character being portrayed for social media. It's understood that there is a suspension of disbelief. That way everybody can get along and be entertained while the content creator is doing the thing, entertaining the audience. But now this is a community that wants a whole bunch of proof. People want receipts. People want all kinds of things when you can't really provide that via social media. And as a result of this, social media personas wind up getting shut down and ostracized from the community because it feels disingenuous. People want real. People want real magic, real practice, real advice, real genuine connection from the witch or the practitioner and Sorry, I had to shoo my cat before she knocked shit down. Between the practitioner who is making the content and their audience, there is a raw genuineness that is expected. But that's not how social media works! Or maybe what I should say is social media doesn't cater to that because people are at home having their spiritual practice, whatever that spiritual practice might be, and they are a part of this living, thriving thing. They are in communion with their gods. They are in communion with their ancestors. They are doing the magic and they are working the spells and it's all coming together and it's a beautiful, magnificent thing. And that can't be properly portrayed in any meaningful way unless we render it down to be a performance art via social media. So when we are trying to portray something the way that it feels to us, it feels disingenuous to some people who are looking for actual sparks to come out of your fucking fingers. And I think a lot of the way that witch talk has cannibalized itself has to do with people forgetting that this is a social media representation of what is going on in the person's practice. And since there isn't an explicit understanding of that suspension of disbelief, this winds up creating a whole bunch of ridicule and slander and people coming up with their own conclusions that may not be representative of the content creator that is being criti criticized and ridiculed because they're not understanding that there's a fucking disconnect. And a lot of the way that people from older generations criticize younger generations is exactly that. So what wound up happening to Witch Talk was a perfect shitstorm of people not getting it or taking something far too seriously. And some things do need to be taken seriously. Other things don't. 
And without that cushion of kayfabe being understood, a lot of arguments that were ultimately unnecessary wound up happening. And amongst the ensuing arguments and discourse and hot takes and people just being mean and nasty or people responding to others being mean and nasty, what wound up happening was an established set of rules, standards, and regulations wound up being erected, and if you aren't going to abide by these sets of standards and rules and regulations, you would get ostracized, kicked out, excommunicated, canceled even, because what you're demonstrating doesn't fit the standard of what has been pre-approved by the witch talk gatekeepers. To explain a little what I'm talking about, I'm going to use an example. Several times I see multiple different people, multiple different accounts talking about what deity communication actually looks like. And I'm not going to say that they are giving bad advice. What I am going to insist is that what they're explaining is how deity communication looks to them. How it feels to them. Because I think when we see something that's a little weird and a little off kilter, especially when it is in a spiritual community, people get unnerved. People get a little concerned because sometimes some of the things that people portray wind up being a little out there, a little bonkers from time to time. I am definitely one of the people who in the course of my career has presented some wild and bonkers shit. I'm not saying that we shouldn't address problematic behavior or mention that something is concerning when it looks concerning. What I am suggesting, though, is that it is incredibly asinine, dare I say arrogant, to assume that the way that something in your practice looks and feels to you is the way that it is going to be for everybody else. Everybody has different spiritual backgrounds. Everybody has a different way that they were raised, a different way that they came out of those things, and a different way that they overcame the obstacles in their path to get them from where they were to where they are. And if people have been studying and practicing for a long time, then everybody is bound to wind up having a different take, a different takeaway, and there are going to be commonalities. There are going to be similarities, especially if people are pulling from the same or similar sources. But everybody's going to be different. Everybody's going to have a different approach. And based on the way that they have conducted their practice in the past is going to bring them to have a different present than you currently are conducting your practice. There's going to be a different understanding. There are going to be certain things that after you sat down and read a thing or you sat down and performed a ritual for the first time, you're going to have different contemplations. You're going to have different takeaways, different conclusions that those contemplations led you to. And from that, it becomes part of your belief structure. And then you continue practicing in the way that your best reason and logic helped you conclude something that was just a little bit inexplicable. Let's face it, when it comes to magic and spirituality, it's all at least a little bit bonkers. It's all at least a little bit uncouth because we are saying that we believe in the existence of spirits and deities and demons and angels. And if that's not part of your belief, there are plenty of people that do. And there are plenty of different people that have understandings of how these spiritual beings exist. And there are people that have different understandings of how to work magic, working the metaphysical, working pseudoscientific theories in order to bring about magical outcomes. It's all fucking bonkers. But this is where the gatekeepers wind up coming to power. As I've mentioned already earlier in this video, Witch Talk wound up being the product of, as well as the victim of, the discourse that was set before, courtesy of multiple different factors. People were talking about things, people were doing things, people responded to those things, people critiqued those things, and it all became commentary, and a whole bunch of discussion, and not a lot of actual product? What's the word I'm looking for? It wound up amounting to little more than just talk. However, in the process of all of this talk, this became the standard for witch talk. What was popularly accepted and what was popularly rejected. 
And this is where it becomes very difficult for people that have different experiences to really navigate the terrain. So people either have to present a disingenuous version of themselves in order to get by in the community, or they have to present their genuine experience and risk being ousted or called crazy or dangerous or even accused of suffering with spiritual psychosis. That is a conversation for a different video. But it got to a point where if it was any different at all, that person, whoever was presenting something different than what was being upheld, they wound up getting canceled or kicked out of the community altogether. And this is where the gatekeepers hold the power. The gatekeepers in this instance are the popular commentary providers. They are the popular practitioners, the peeper, people that have a decent following because they are presenting information that is either palatable or pleasantly challenging to their audience. And because of that, people keep coming back for more, to hear more of their content, to see more of what they have to provide, and they wind up with quite the following. This doesn't mean that there's anything bad, what it does mean is that there is a particular type of content creation that is much more palatable to the algorithm in that particular community that makes certain takes and certain understandings much more palatable to the general audience. And these are the people that wind up being at the top of the food chain in this social hierarchy called witch talk, and they get to tell people what is okay and what is not okay. And there are a whole bunch of them. I'm not about to single anybody out because at the end of the day, this could happen to any community. This could happen in any setting. The people that are popular set the tone and standard. The people who have more eyes on them and are more convincing are able to play up their oration skills or present something that's exciting but not so exciting that it's rejected. These are the people that wind up having notoriety, recognition, and more people wind up knowing something about them. And they don't get kicked out because whatever they're doing in their content is appealing to that audience. And it is their collective takes, their content, whether they are doing it deliberately or not, that winds up setting the standard for everybody else. And then the people that try to do the right thing, being aware of their position in the social consciousness of the community that they are a part of, when they see something that is concerning or dangerous or something that they think is off kilter, when there is something presented to them or somebody asks them about something, they provide their two cents, they give commentary, whatever it is, they give their opinion. And they have the ability to call somebody out and now all of their followers are now doing what they think is in their right to do something about the person that has been called out. And this behavior is not limited to witchy and occult circles. Unfortunately, this is behavior that we see in every single community on TikTok. This is something that we see all over Twitter. This is something that we see all over YouTube. This is the way that things are. This is just how it works and functions because this particular algorithm structure also placates to the way that we abide by rules and our own social hierarchies. So, I don't want to get into it too much here, but I am aware of this because I have fallen victim to this type of mentality. In 2022, I did, performed what I now call the Deity Series, a two-month non-stop deity interaction saga that got pretty far out there, and it got pretty carried away, and it scared people, and they didn't like it, and for a while, I became at the talk of the town until eventually, I wound up getting canceled. 8,000 people left my following, and people that I never even met were talking about me. Armchair psychologists were psychoanalyzing me. I was dehumanized. That way it would be easier to talk bad about me. Example, people were literally saying that because I had done a bad thing, that means that my pronouns were not worth respecting. By doing the bad thing, that privilege got taken from me.
There's a lot to go into it. I've talked about it before. Hell, I've talked about it here before. And this was only possible because of the strict and ardent adherent rule that had been the product of years of witch talk existing and everything that came before coming to what we had then and everything about the deity series that I was doing I was commenting on that. The reason I did the deity series was because I was fed up with the spiritual tomfoolery in my own life going on and being tired of being so close to something and it being snatched away from me inexplicably. So I decided to air my grievances with divine beings to the public. And also, I found that an incredibly unique circumstance where I could also ridicule the problematic elements in the community that I felt nobody was addressing. And for it, I still haven't recovered. Yeah, sure. Some people don't even remember the Deity series. Some people that are following me now on that platform weren't even there. But this is exactly why I say I am in a unique position to be criticizing witch talk. Because my criticisms that I have now existed before. And they were made reality and in action against me in real time. And those problems exist now. And as we are facing the moment where we may not have TikTok anymore. It's looking incredibly likely and those implications are frightening. But there is already the starting point of people jumping over from TikTok over to YouTube. There's already people who were starting off in Witch Talk making content on YouTube. And I do not want the same things that happened there to happen here. That would be a goddamn shame. And people here are already talking about the migration. People here are already complaining about something that hasn't even happened yet. People here are already sharing their grievances about witch talkers being young and naive and not being serious and not being able to stand the test of time. And honestly, quite frankly, there might be something to that. But if we greet this intersection of two different social media platforms converging into one, then we are doomed to repeat the same cycles that brought down witch talk before TikTok even ended. On a surface level, it is incredibly easy to criticize and ridicule witch talk as a whole. On the surface level, it is easy to look at what happened, wipe our hands of the whole thing and say, good riddance to bad rubbish. And there's a part of me that is relieved, honestly, for the prospect to be able to do that because I have been chewed up and spit out by witch talk. But I can't say that it's all bad. Courtesy of my presence on social media, I have way more followers here. It's, I now have over a thousand subscribers here when I had barely 200 before and that's all thanks to my presence on the witchy side of TikTok. I have been able to afford getting by, not thriving, but surviving courtesy of witch talk. My own practice, my own life, everything has been changed and although there are a lot of bad things that happened, my life is better off thanks to witch talk, in spite of everything that I've said here, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise. My life has been made better by witch talk, and that is a fucked up thing for me to say, but I am recognizing it for what it is. Because it's not the community. It is the people. And in the community, there are good people, and there are 
problematic people. There are people that want to learn and want to do the right thing and want to understand how they can make the world a better place with their knowledge and with their magic. There are people that are only doing it for vainglory and to showboat and to utilize domination glamour magic, as I like to call it, in order to overpower others. That way they can get ahead in the world. But these things are not the product of witch talk. This is just how people are. And the reason why there is such a bad taste in people's mouth when we bring up the word witch talk is because what we have focused on is all of the bad. What has been allowed to prosper has been all of the bad. What we focused on has been all of the bad. That doesn't mean the good didn't exist. That doesn't mean that there aren't good people that came out of witch talk. That doesn't mean that good things didn't happen because of witch talk. That doesn't mean that witch talk has demonstrably been all bad. And that's a lot coming from me. But just like I feel like a Frankenstein's millennial, being able to understand millennials and Gen Z in unique and differing ways where I agree with some takes and I disagree with others, Exactly like I can appreciate and be grateful and thankful for the technology that we have now, wishing we had it back in the day, but at the same time having lived back in the day and not having that easily accessible to me, I have had to fight to find good information. I have had to scrounge and dig deep into the darkest annals of the internet and find some of the worst shit just to get some occult information. I have been on multiple sides of multiple fences, and I started off in YouTube. I got a lot of love for YouTube. YouTube is home to me in a way that TikTok could never be. And all of my good graces have come from TikTok, not from YouTube. And my life has been better thanks to TikTok. And if it does go bye-bye, I'm gonna fucking grieve it. But even if it doesn't, it's already been proven to be faulty and unreliable because we don't know the fate of it or what balance it hangs in. So people are going to come over here regardless. People are going to start migrating over here regardless. They already have. People want something that is more stable. And for all of the complaints and grievances that have been about YouTube, it's at least still fucking here. That alone provides far more stability than a lot of other different social media platforms that exist right now. So people are going to start coming here regardless. And we need to be ready for it. We need to be able to humble ourselves enough to not repeat the same patterns that brought us the death of witch talk. Because if we aren't ahead of this, if we are trying to take the time to understand that there is complications and there are external factors and there are nuances and things that people simply weren't aware of that took place on Witch Talk, then we're not going to take the time to listen to others when all of the Witch Talkers are here. We're not going to take the time to try to see the silver lining or the gray middle area. And that is something we desperately need to do if we don't want Witch Tube to suffer the same fate as Witch Talk. Thanks to Witch Talk, more people are practicing magic. Thanks to Witch Talk, more people are connecting with their ancestral roots. Thanks to Witch Talk, more people are worshiping the old gods and learning about the old ways, uncovering things that have been all but destroyed by the church. Thanks to Witch Talk, Witchcraft and paganism are now on store shelves in front of everybody's face. And the only reason that was possible was because enough commotion was stirred up for the bad, utilizing the witch talk hashtag, and people came looking. And people's lives have been changed for the better. Let's remember these things as we move into the next chapter of social media and witchcraft in public spaces together. And that is exactly the point of this video. To ask people to take heed and to take warning. Otherwise we are doomed to repeat the same things that happened somewhere else. Because it doesn't start with platforms or communities. It begins and ends with people. 
and how we conduct ourselves and how we view the world around us. And I think that's where I'm going to tie this off. If you're still here, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, take care and much love. Six and a half hours later. What the absolute fuck is a witch war? You know what, never mind, that's a rhetorical question. But I do have a serious question. You do realize that shit like that is exactly why witch talk is dead. Because that's all that's left. And I haven't exactly taken on this topic before. And I don't exactly think this is me taking it on now. But what really is the point in wasting your time on such trivial things? And now I've got another question. Say this app does get taken away. Do you think there's going to be space made for that type of bullshit on other platforms? Because quite frankly, it's nothing but a bunch of foolish showboating. Oh, look at how big my magical phallus is. You want to mess with me? Let me show you how powerful I am. You realize people make fun of you. You realize you are the butt of jokes because you've turned yourself into one. And this frustration isn't for everybody. But in the event that we do have to migrate, you do realize that every other platform that has a witchy or pagan community is dreading it because the people that are a part of my community here so easily get worked up into a tizzy over things that are little more than he said, she said bullshit. And yes, there are certain conversations that I am aware of. And I am refusing to pick anybody's side because any side is a stupid one. In the time that I have uploaded here, I have very rarely actually addressed people's problematic behavior directly. Instead, I talk about behaviors and explain why they are a problem. Because first of all, I understand how quickly people get dragged into bullshit that they probably don't deserve. People want to talk about how toxic witch talk is and how much drama there is on witch talk. And some of them turn right around and perpetuate the toxic behaviors. And I filmed a video earlier for the other place, hoping to address some of the anxiety that a lot of people are feeling right now because a witch talker migration is imminent. And I'm wondering if that video was fucking naive. Because sitting here at potentially the final hour, people are still outing others for things that may not have even happened. Here's a little bit of wisdom to offer to everybody here. If somebody is overly concerned about ethics, morality, and red flags, odds are it's a distraction from their own bullshit behavior. And please mistake me not, I'm not singling anybody out. Because historically, the people that preach these points are the people that don't want their audience looking at them under any kind of scrutiny. And when push comes to shove, they are the first people trying to take people down for not living up to their own contrived set of standards. Witch talk has a reputation, and that is exactly because of the loudest people that have been in it. So now people are worried about witch talkers coming into their witchy communities on other platforms, and I can't find a single reason to fault them for it. It is really easy to sway public perception. And I know that when I was canceled, people were coming up with crazy ideas about me. People were spitting stories based in narrative and not fact. People are much more willing to perpetuate the drama for the sake of their own entertainment. Because it's so much more interesting than actually giving a shit about the dignity or the humanity of somebody else. And to even call these petty little squabbles something as sensational as a witch war only is a testament to the vainglory of those who are participating. Is this why you wanted to do magic to begin with? Is this why you wanted to start worshipping the old gods? If the answer is no, then why the fuck are you getting caught up in this nonsense? People's lives and livelihoods get ruined based off of hearsay. And I'm not saying that problematic behavior shouldn't be addressed, but that's never where it ends. People aren't held accountable. To the contrary, people's lives and livelihoods are entirely ruined. And for what? You think you get to call yourself cool for participating in a witch war? Really, it's witch hunts being conducted by other witches. And the thing about historical witch hunts is it was never about witches. It was about ostracizing and doing away with people that were undesired to be in those communities. 
It's nothing more than an excuse to get people out because you don't like them. And the consequences of those actions fall on the people that are doing the hunting. If you can't get all the way over yourself by the time this app is gone, then do all of us a favor and stay out of the next community. Otherwise, you will bring it down with you. I think I'm done now.